Hello everyone, welcome back to V course. This is Vipin. In today's video, I will explain the logic behind a digital clock code, which I recently posted in my blog. You can find the link to this blog post in the description. So let me explain the code right away. As you can see, I have started the VHDL code with the library declaration. This is the standard library, which everyone knows about. And this numeric underscore standard is used because I am using unsigned uh, data type, all right. And uh, just as a side note, this library is very much recommended uh, rather than using uh, standard logic edit or standard logic unsigned by VHDL experts. Coming to the entity of the digital clock, we have uh, five inputs and three outputs. So we have a system clock input which is the uh, clock available in your uh, FPGA board or something like that, like 50 megahertz, 100 megahertz, whatever it is. And reset is a asynchronous active high uh, reset, which will reset the time. The minutes, uh, seconds and hours are going to be become zero when you apply high pulse here. And then you have these three uh, inputs, which stands for increment seconds, increment minutes and increment hours. So what I'm trying to do here is like if you apply a pulse equal to the width of a clock cycle, then uh, the corresponding uh, variable will get incremented by one. So if you apply pulse here, the seconds will get incremented by one. And in this case, minutes will get incremented by one and so on for hours. Okay. So this will help us to uh, set the time to a particular value. Okay. Now um, we have uh, seconds, minutes and hours as outputs, which as you can see, like I have uh, declared them as unsigned and uh, seconds and minutes have a maximum value of 59, right? So I need a uh, six bits minimum to uh, hold that value. So that is why it's five down to zero and hours has a maximum value of 23. So I have declared them as a five bit uh, value. Okay. So and this generic parameter clock frequency is the frequency of this clock input. So this is needed to derive a one second data interval from the input clock, okay, which I will explain soon. Now coming to the architecture, uh, we have this uh, internal signals declared here, uh, seconds, minutes and hours and they are declared as integers. In many cases, integers are easier to work with. So I have used them here. Also, uh, one more reason I have, I had to declare uh, internal signals is because I cannot increment or do any operations directly on the seconds, minutes and hours here because these are uh, output uh, variables. So I cannot directly change anything there. So the only way to do is um, declare some internal variables like this and then uh, do all your operations and finally assign them to these uh, output variables okay and uh, this is a counter uh, integer which i will soon explain why it's needed okay so going to the process statement uh, we have a reset which is uh, asynchronous active high active high means when it is one the seconds, minutes and hours will get a reset to zero, including the counter. And this is asynchronous because it's operating outside the clock. So the rising edge uh, clock uh, statement is here, but it's outside. So as soon as the reset changes value, the effect will be immediate in the state of the design. Now uh, within the rising edge of the clock, when the clock changes from zero to one, that uh, is indicated by rising edge. So within that, I am first checking whether the increment seconds or increment minutes or increment hours. So any of these inputs is high. So if they are high, then I have to increment uh, seconds or minutes or hours by one. This is the logic for that. Within each of this if statement, I have this piece of code here. So what I'm trying to do is if uh, seconds is hasn't reached their maximum value of 59, then I can just increment it by one here, like, like here you can see in the L statement. But if it is reached the maximum value of 59, then I can't make it 60, right? That's an invalid uh, seconds if you, for a digital clock. 
So I have to just make it to 0. And when I make it to 0, I have to increment minutes, right? Because seconds has reached their maximum values. So of course, so you need to increment the minute. So the same kind of logic I, I do here. I check if minutes has reached their maximum value. And if it is yes, I reset to 0 and check for hours has reached their maximum value or not. Otherwise, I just increment it directly by 1 here, okay? And the same kind of logic I have used uh, here and even here, okay? So that's, that's how I uh, set the time. Now we are going to look at the regular operation of the clock when uh, it's a uh, free running, right? So this is where we need to use this counter signal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count uh, 0 to uh, clock frequency minus 1. So basically I am counting this many times, right? And that will give me one second of time. Every time it reaches this value, I can sa safely assume that uh, one second has passed and I can increment the seconds. So that is what I am doing here. And this is exactly the same kind of statements which I have used here, line uh, 41 to 55, right? So there is nothing new in there. And uh, if it hasn't reached the maximum value, I just increment the counter. Okay, until it, it reaches this value. Uh, as I said, so these seconds, minimum, minutes and hours are internal variables and I have to convert them to unsigned data type to assign as outputs. So that's what I'm doing here. So two unsigned converts an integer into an unsigned data type. And this second parameter 6, 6 and 5 uh, shows the size of the output. Okay. So it converts seconds into a 6-bit unsigned data type. Okay. So we have reached the end of the digital clock module, our top module. And now let's test this. And for testing, I have created a test bench, which is here. So let me explain that. So we will start with the library declaration. So I have declared an additional library and I will explain you why it's declared there. Okay. So we have an empty uh, entity, no ports, no inputs, no outputs. And this is the component we want to uh, test. And uh, that's declared here. Um, you can see the inputs and output signals are declared right here. And the clock period is uh, just randomly set as 10, second, 10 nanosecond for uh, testing purposes. And uh, clock frequency is, uh, the clock frequency in hertz and it's set as 10. Uh, basically, it should be 100 million as per this clock period, but I don't want to wait for hours and hours of simulation to finish to test the code. So just for testing purposes, I have used a value of 10. Okay. And in case you want to test this code on board, uh, you definitely have to set it to uh, the correct value. If you set it to 10, uh, it won't work. Inside the begin statement, I have instantiated the unit under test, which is digital clock. And I have passed the gen generic parameters here. So you can see that this clock frequency value is uh, passed as a generic uh, parameter. You might have noticed that in our original entity of digital clock, the clock frequency has a default value of 50 million. And this value will get uh, overridden by this value 10, okay? Signals are, the inputs and outputs are assigned here correctly. And this is the clock process uh, definition. And this is how I generate the clock. I make the clock 0 for uh, half of the clock period. And then I make clock 1 for the next half of the period. And I repeat it over and over again, okay? Now the stimulus process. So this is where we are going to apply the inputs, okay? This is where we are going to test the digital clock. So we will start with a uh, high reset just to initialize the system, so as to say, and wait for a random time. Um, then I pull down the reset. And when you pull down the reset, the clock will start working. It will be a free running clock. 
regularly incrementing times uh, when it is needed. So, I am going to wait for 25 hours just to test the whole thing just to make sure it is doing a whole cycle of uh, more than 24 hours. I am going to run it for 25 hours. Uh, it does not mean that we have to wait for 25 hours of simulation just means that 25 hours of simulation time as per the digital clock ok. So, how you do that is like uh, I multiply clock period by clock frequency which will give me 1 second and that 1 second is multiplied by 60 which will give you 1 minute and that is multiplied by 60 again which will give you 1 hour and that multiplied by 25 gives you 25 hours ok. So, Next, uh, I want to test if I can uh, set the time properly. So, first I want to see if uh, increment seconds works properly or not. So, I make it high for just one clock period and it should increment the seconds output by one and then I wait for a random time say 5 seconds and then apply the increment seconds for 60 times continuously for 60 clock periods. I am going to make increment seconds as 1 ok because when you do that the digital clock entity is supposed to increment the seconds by 60 times. So, I am just going to test if it is uh, working well even in that situation and after that I wait again for 5 seconds and then I test in a similar fashion increment minutes ok. It is the same logic this thing is almost the same logic as this. So, there is no need of uh, like redundancy explanation and uh, again increment hours the same way I am doing just uh, only difference is that instead of applying it for 60 times I do it for only 25 times because you know like 25 times gives you uh, one whole cycle right. And once uh, we have tested that I am going to apply the reset because by this time all the inputs are tested we have uh, made sure that uh, the clock is running uh, properly. So, there is uh, nothing more to do. So, I make the reset high, I just wait for a random time and then I use the keyword finish. So, this finish is from this library that is why I have declared this library. So, this will uh, automatically stop the simulation and it will exit the si simulation otherwise iSIM will just uh, continuously run the code and we would not know when to stop right or we would have to calculate and based on all these values and then apply a particular uh, time of simulation. So, this is very helpful in uh, that kind of situation ok. By now we are done with the test bench ok. Now, what we have left to do is uh, we have to simulate it ok. Let us see how the whole thing is doing um, right in action. So, we have this thing here let us uh, run this code for 10 millisecond just have to write it as 10 ms here and then click on this and I am going to zoom out I want to change the radix of this unsigned into unsigned decimal so that I can see it clearly. So, you can see the reset is uh, high so everything is 0 and then as soon as it is uh, uh, becomes 0 it is not uh, active then uh, the second starts uh, getting incremented. So, you can see that based on this value we can see how fast the seconds get incremented. So, 195 and then next change is happening at 295, the next one is happening at 395 etcetera. So, every 100 nanosecond uh, the seconds are getting incremented alright and uh, you can see when the seconds value reaches 59 the minutes becomes 1 and the seconds get reset to 0 ok. And similarly if you zoom out a bit. So, similarly when the minutes value reaches 59 it uh, the next value is 0 it is reset to 0 and the hours value becomes 1 just like how any digital clock is supposed to work. So, now let us see when the hours value reaches 23 which is uh, 11 o'clock you can see that 
we check if the minutes has reached 59 and seconds has reached 59 and then we reset everything to zero just to say okay it's midnight basically okay so this part is working the regular uh, running of the clock is working so now i want to check if the increment seconds uh, how it is doing all right so you can see that the clock value is zero here and as i apply increment seconds here at the rising edge of the clock cycle the seconds value got incremented by one okay which is good which is just what we wanted then also in the test bench i am applying this increment seconds for 60 times right so that is uh, what we are going to check now so you can see that i am doing it for 60 times and you can see how the seconds get incremented super fast like 6 to 7 7 to 8 every increment happens in one clock cycle which is also what we wanted so that seems to be working well and also when the 59 it reaches 59 it becomes zero and the minutes also got uh, incremented by one even when uh, we are setting the time okay so that's also good it's working well and now the similar test has been performed for increment minutes and you can see that uh, the minutes value was one and it became two right and similarly here the value two becomes uh, three four five because the increment minutes input is one for 60 times right so that's good it's working well now let's um, check if uh, the increment hours is working okay so the hours value was 2 which became 3 right when the input is applied increment hours is applied and uh, here i am applying it for like 25 clock cycles and uh, you can see that 3 becomes 4 4 becomes 5 everything happens in one clock cycle so now we know that uh, these inputs are working the regular uh, free running of the clock is working which uh, concludes our uh, simulation and uh, one thing i want to mention is that like how the simulation stopped at this time and you can see that uh, it says uh, failure finish user vhdl code called simulation stop so it says failure but uh, don't worry about that word failure it's not a failure just the vhdl code asked the simulation to be stopped so that concludes our test bench now quickly go back to the isc and let's implement this design okay let's see so rerun so you can see that the synthesis completed successfully so you can uh, in fact run this code on a board and you can see that it says minimum period of 2.635 nanosecond and maximum frequency of 379 megahertz which is the value for this uh, board settings okay it can change but for this board settings this is the value they have come up with so basically means that you cannot apply a 400 megahertz uh, a clock to this uh, digital clock it has to be 379 or less right you can see that there is this this warning sign here this means there are some warnings no errors but there are some warnings so what are these things so these things come because in our digital clock you have declared we have declared seconds minutes and hours as integer right but their maximum value only uses uh, six by six bits or five bits maximum so the other bits an integer is uh, supposed to have 32 bits right so the other bits are seen to be redundant by the tool so the tool knows that this these uh, integers will never go beyond the value of 60 so these uh, higher order bits like 31 to let's say 17 and even more yeah like you can see second six so all this as a constant value of zero in the block so the flip-flop or latch will be trimmed during optimization process the tool knows that we are not going to use it 
so it will automatically remove these bits during the synthesis which is very good for us so we don't need to be particular about that you can just declare them as integers and let the tool do the work okay so we are not really wasting any resources by declaring them as integers by now we have reached the end of this uh, video and i think i have explained whatever i wanted to explain uh, hopefully you found this code helpful and uh, Actually, I want to extend this uh, project in my next uh, blog post where I will be connecting these outputs to a unsigned to BCD converter and that output will be passed to a 7 segment decoder module which can be uh, directly given to a FPGA board where you can see if your FPGA board has a 7 segment display, you can directly see the clock values. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel if you want to receive the notification when I do and upload that uh, video. Also, if this uh, video has been useful to you, please like this video. It keeps me motivated to upload uh, more videos. Thank you. Have a good day. See you next time.